Hi there. I'm Keith, senior software engineer at Anchor, working on op open source tools. Anchor is a leader in software supply chain security, works with agencies like Space Force and eBay. Today I'm going to tell you about software bills of materials, SBOMs, and their importance. I'm sure everyone here knows a bit about the software supply chain, but just to recap, software is used to run our code, our software depends on other libraries, we have other tools used to build our code, and our software is distributed in many different ways. All of the different parts that comprise software today amount to a mountain. We've got things at the bottom like the operating system, build tools on top of that, dependencies that are pulled in from there, um, over to the container runtime, platform runtimes. At any point during these build and distribution processes, we have the possibility for a supply chain to become vulnerable. Things like bugs in our own code, known vulnerabilities in uh, dependencies, stolen credentials, uh, when we go to deploy to uh, staging or to production, for example. Here are some examples of recent vulnerabilities you may have heard of. Log for shell, uh, the widespread log for J vulnerability. SolarWinds, which is a build time supply chain attack. Uh, or even Node IPC, where malware was introduced by the maintainer. In order to identify potential problems, one of the most useful methods is vulnerability scanning. However, many methods are only run after something's delivered. Tools like uh, Gripe are able to scan dependencies and provide results at build time. Well, back to our topic. What is a software bill of materials, or SBOM, and why should you care? Fundamentally, an SBOM is a catalog of software that is used by other software. For example, an operating system, an executable, a Java jar, a Webpack bundle. What does having this software catalog provide us? Well, a number of things. Vulnerability assessment is an obvious benefit. License compliance, such as GPL, um, is another common use case. And a recent executive order by, uh, by the Biden administration to improve cybersecurity. SBOMs come in all kinds of different formats. Three of the most popular are SPDX, Cyclone DX, and SIFT. These formats cover different things, uh, including more than just software sometimes, such as specific, specific hardware configuration. As noted, these formats don't all have the same goals or properties. Uh, for example, uh, SPDX might be focused on licensing. They're not entirely interoperable, um, and, and they're for different purposes a lot of the time. There are a number of different SBOM generation tools, some of which are specific to a language like Python or Go. Uh, for the rest of this talk, we'll be focusing on SIFT, which supports a wide variety of ecosystems, including many Linux dis distributions and various package managers. Let's see what steps we can take to make our mountain of software more understandable. The first step is understanding how to get SBOMs and what to do with them at a basic level. We'll start with a very basic overview of using SIFT for this purpose. First, you need to get it. There are lots of ways, including homebrew or using curl, as you can see here. Uh, next, you'll need to determine what to run against, whether it's something on a local file system or a container. And there are a couple examples scanning Alpine or uh, a local directory. After you've executed SIFT and have some sort of SBOM, it may be important to think about what format you need. Uh, if you need to integrate with other tools or deliver something downstream to a consumer. And then it's time to think about what comes next. Do we need to validate license compliance or scan for vulnerabilities? Well, to do the vulnerability scanning, it's easy with Gripe. All we need to do is obtain it the same way we did SIFT, such as curl, uh, and then we can run it with the SBOM that we generated. Once you have a way to generate SBOMs, it's time to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. This is something that you want to do for every part of your, your supply chain, every repository, every build process, every release, every deployment. In order to generate SBOMs at the right time, the first thing to do is examine your supply chain. What tools is your build process using? What container is deployed? After you've added SBOM generation, you can begin continually scanning these to know about new vulnerabilities quickly. I put together a sample GitHub repository, uh, you can see right here, to show how some of this work works seamlessly together. It uses only Anchor open source, uh, including some GitHub actions that work with SIFT and Gripe to scan multiple SBOMs continually. For a single repository, this is fairly easy to set up, but once you get past that, it may get a little trickier. Your entire software delivery lifecycle 
is probably not contained in just one or two repositories. You'll probably want to start thinking about things like policies and gates. Well, that's all I could cram into this five minutes, uh, but there's so much more to talk about. I hope I've given you an idea of what SBOMs are, what you can do with them, how you can start your SBOM journey. Feel free to jump on the Angular community Slack to chat with me. Um, and without further ado, I'll hobble myself off of here.